What's up guys? This is a foundational video on how to choose comm gear. Since making videos about comm, I've been, I've been asked what to get for comm gear. I feel I should take a step back and go over the basics of tactical comm for a given environment including command communication, utilizing repeaters, or long-range communications for a regional, national, or international communications. There's been many vids showcasing gear, different bands such as Amateur, HAM, CB, FRS, GMRS, MURES, acronyms such as SWR, quarter wavelength, half wavelength, five-eighth wavelength, Dipoles, Yaggies, HF, UHF, it's daunting. I mean, I'm just going, I'm just losing my breath trying to pronounce all these acronyms and terms and stuff like that. So, what I like to do, before I go any further in showcasing gear or ideas or anything, is just to take, a, take a step back and go back to the basics. You hear about FRS, CBs, GMRS amateur band and all that other stuff but what is it really and how will it apply to you let's boil it down back to the basics I mean it's daunting like look look at all this gear here all these all this gear it's all different different bands different services different radios different power levels requirements antennas I mean it, it's worse than choosing a firearm I mean but I'm hoping in this video to boil it down to, to what you need for your particular situation and environment because that's very important. Your, your mission and the environment that you're going to be operating in, no matter if you're a prepper, doomsday prepper, uh, disaster preparedness guys, you know, earthquakes, uh, fires and whatnot, uh, or if you want to talk to your buddies in a ball game across the stadium, whatever. And public safety guys like cops and uh, EMS and firefighters. It, it, hopefully it will encompass all those disciplines. Let's take the approach of the designers of the A-10 Warthog. They first identified the mission, close air support tank killer. Chose the tool to accomplish the mission, a 30 millimeter Avenger Gatling cannon then they built the plane around the gun let's choose our comm gear utilizing the same premise first you gotta identify where you're gonna operate your radio and who you're gonna talk to it makes a difference whether you're gonna communicate in the city or in the country or if you wanna go long distance past your horizon let's say into another state or even another country so taking that into consideration, those are requirements that you would need to identify before choosing a radio. Then the next step after that is to choose the frequency and the type of antenna you want to utilize. That's the bottom line right there, frequency and the antenna. And we'll go through the whole spectrum of radio frequencies that's available to you and show how those frequencies are operated in certain environments and what's best suited for you in the particular environment that you want to operate in. So let's begin with the uh, low frequencies, HF, high frequencies. On the low end of the spectrum you have HF frequencies, high frequencies and it's uh, the span is from 1 megahertz all the way up to 30 megahertz and this frequency, the properties of these frequencies is it's able to bounce off the atmosphere on the ionosphere back to ground earth and back up again so in that case when you transmit on that frequency you could go past your horizon halfway around the world with enough power for civilians you would need a amateur radio license from the FCC that's uh, past the technician class. Anything higher than a technician class, your uh, general and up, 
you're able to transmit on those frequencies. Uh, another frequency band that you could use is CB, which is 26 megahertz up to uh, 27 megahertz on the upper end of uh, 27 megahertz. Uh, you d it's not a license is not required for that, but you're limited to uh, four watts on AM uh, mode, and if you're using a si single sideband mode, you could transmit up to 12 watts of power. Uh, that's legally now. Uh, you've heard from other sites and whatnot that they have uh, one kilowatt amplifiers and stuff like that. That is illegal. But as a civilian, right off the bat, you could buy yourself a CB radio and talk AM HF communications. Right off the bat. And it's a cheap, viable option for those of you who just wants, wants to get into uh, communications. There, there are a dime a dozen out there. Uh, if you burn one up because your antenna is not tuned correctly or whatever, no big deal. Just so here's a field expedient replica of a CB antenna tuned to the CB band, 27 megahertz. Here I have a a full quarter inch, uh, quarter wavelength antenna, 102, 102 inches long. It's going up there. It's not going to be the most efficient antenna, but guess what? It's tuned right in that band. This is the CB band. But you can see again another example of how impractical this size will be for portable communications. It's best off for uh, vehicle and uh, base stations, such as a fixed location. Now here's that type of antenna again, the CB antenna. And it's 65 inches long and it's already continuously loaded so it's actually shorter than a full quarter wavelength antenna this one is 65 inches long and the frequency that it's tuned to is 18 megahertz that's way down there in the uh, HF band out of band and that's because the spring here added a good four inches, four to five inches of length and that in, in turn adds to the overall length uh, of the wavelength of this uh, antenna here that it's tuned for. So the longer the antenna the lower the frequency that it will be tuned for and it's reflected here 18 megahertz. If this was just flushed to the ball joint here then I would have had 26, 25 uh, 27 megahertz for the CB band. But then again, uh, this is an example of what you could use out there. Cheap, no license required, but sometimes it'll be impractical as far as the size of the antenna. Uh, the range is pretty good for around four miles, four to five miles on a good day. And uh, if you're running single sideband, you could go even longer. Uh, I would say five, six, seven miles that's with the legal CB. Uh, the good thing about CB also is that you could bounce off of uh, terrain. Also it could go past your visible horizon as well. Uh, but it's only limited to base station like in a permanent installation and vehicles. Uh, they have handheld CB radios but uh, they're not too efficient in reception or transmission since it's a little bit challenging on trying to get one of these antennas to to be scaled down to fit into a, a handheld or portable radio. So here's an example of using, using coils to shorten the physical length of an antenna. This quarter wave antenna that's mounted on the truck is tuned for 45 megahertz. The total length of that is uh, 75 inches from the bottom of the spring to the top of the tip. Now this antenna here is a CB antenna tuned for 26, 27 megahertz and the total length of that is uh, 65 inches. Why is it shorter? Because it's continuously loaded. If you see that, that this ridge, that's another piece of wire wrapped around the fiberglass center 
in such a way that it's tuned for that frequency range for CB. So this coil here will physically shorten the length of the antenna, but electrically it's the same length of a quarter wave antenna. So that, that's a trick that the uh, manufacturers or engineers or whatever use to uh, shorten the length of antennas when it's physically too big for it to be practical in everyday use. So there you have it, a, C, a CB antenna that's 65 inches long in this configuration and you have a 45 megahertz antenna twice the frequency yet it's 75 inches long because there's no loading on there, it's just a straight rod. The next band that civilians could use is uh, 6 meters meaning that the wavelength of a full 50 megahertz signal is 6 meters long so here is a quarter wavelength antenna constructed out of uh, electrical wire 14 gauge wire and it's 59 inches long which equates to a quarter wavelength and uh, for this quarter wavelength to properly work on a vehicle you need a ground plane and what this ground plane does is uh, the basis the basic or the basis that every antenna is compared to is a dipole so a dipole is a half wavelength antenna fed from the middle well this is a quarter wavelength but to make it efficient you need a ground plane because the ground plane will make the next the next quarter wavelength of that weight of that signal so here you have the radiating portion of it a quarter wavelength long and the ground plane which is this real estate around here creates the other quarter wavelength to make this theoretically of a half wavelength antenna but the vehicle ground or body is making up the, the other half and what this does is this antenna will radiate and some of the a lot of the radiation will, will be sort of a 360 degrees uh, pattern and some of that radiation will be bounced off the ground plane and reflected back upwards essentially doubling your power in this configuration so that's why in all vehicle configuration uh, the standard is a quarter wavelength antenna because of those properties you, you can use a smaller antenna and it's the impedance of it 50 ohms which by nature this configuration presents that impedance naturally to the radio so that's why you hear 50 ohm uh, impedance and 75 ohm impedance but for this particular case is 50 ohm impedance I know it's too technical but you know it is what it is but uh, so at 6 meters 51 megahertz around there 52 that you could use uh, it's great for long distance communications as far as car to car it will not bounce off the ionosphere uh, you might get a little skip but uh, n it's unpredictable you cannot rely on it this is for FM vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to portable communications or vehicle to base it, it's good for the long haul on the same amount of power uh, a low power rather it, it'll cast out its power a lot farther as if the frequency was higher let's say 150 megahertz or 400 megahertz so in other words what I'm saying is if this thing is transmitting 5 watts and I have another radio at a 450 megahertz range transmitting with 5 watts this radio here would go farther because of the longer wavelength uh, it's no good for penetrating through foliage and stuff like that in buildings and whatnot because of the bigger wavelength but it has the ability to to bounce off of buildings and refract and 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 uh, sort of flood the the valleys and in the con in the concrete jungle or in the mountainous area 